Hi, everyone, and welcome to Digital Don't Take's webinar series. This is Mahmoud al Bashti with you today from Digital Don't Take's International Academy. Our colleagues, we know that the complete removable dental prosthesis remains an effective treatment option for edentulous patients. Providing a useful and comfortable prosthesis requires a careful diagnosis, planning, and maintenance. However, digital workflow for complete removable dental prosthesis plays an important role to provide an effective prosthesis. It's our pleasure today to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Song Chi Yang from the School of Dentistry, National Taiwan University. Dr. Yang will share with us his experience in the digital workflow for complete removable dental prosthesis from the prospective points of clinical procedures, research, and education. Dr. Yang is an associate professor at the School of Dentistry, National Taiwan University. In 2001, he graduated from the China Medical University Dental School, Taiwan. And then in 2009, he got his PhD degree from the Graduate School of Dentistry, Osaka University, Japan. From 2009 until 2011, he was a doctoral research fellow at the Department of Prostodontics and Oral Rehabilitation, School of Dentistry, Osaka University, Japan. From 2012, until 2018, he was an assistant professor. And since 2018, he's an associate professor at the School of Dentistry, National Taiwan University. Dr. Yang is a member of the Academy of Prosthetic Dentistry Taiwan, and also a member of the International College of Prosthodontics. It's our pleasure today to welcome him to share with us his experience in the digital workflow for the complete removal dental prosthesis. Um, Dr. Yang, uh, it's our pleasure to having you with us today. And we would like to thank you for accepting our uh, invitation to be with us um, today. Um, just uh, before Dr. Yang start his presentation, I would like to mention that um, all the attendees can write down their um, questions in the um, Q&A part. And after the presentation, Dr. Yang will answer all these uh, questions. So once again, we would like to thank uh, Dr. Yang for accepting our uh, invitation. And I think Dr. Yang, the, uh, the stage is yours, uh, please. Thank you for your warm introduction. I'm Zhong Jie Yang. It's a great honor to be able to speak to you with our experience on digital workflow for complete adventure today. It's greeting from Taipei, Taiwan. This is the place I work and the city I live. I wish we can meet face to face soon at the challenging global times. Today, I would like to divide my presentation into three parts, clinical procedure research and education. About the clinical procedure, I'm going to focus on our experience for KKM Denture, especially what kind of challenge we face by using this technique and what we found during the long-term follow-up period. Then, I would like to introduce our student, our study on CAD-CAM denture and share with you our findings. In the last part, I'm going to introduce the complete denture education in National Taiwan University, NTU. I would like to share with you about the feedback from our student when they try to use the digital tool to design the denture. In our school, I'm in charge of removable prosthetic complete course. We take eight hours every week 
to do the laboratory work from initial impression to denture finish. Here is one of the wax dentures from our students. She did a good job. As you can see from the screen, hammering tooth arrangement, lateral movement with contact on working side, and the balancing contact, even with anterior contact in protrusion. However, for most of the students, lab work is always a challenge. I try to summarize some common problems during denture construction, and here are some examples. From my experience, the most difficult part for them is tooth arrangement and the occlusal skin. As you can see from the screen, teeth without any occlusal contact, sometimes even open, open bite of teeth from the right quarter, but was placed on the left side. And the next common problem is on the process of dental flasking or packing. When I saw the lab work like that, I asked myself how to teach new generation in an effective way. Additionally, could digital workflow help them to understand this process well? So let's see the development of digital workflow for complete denture. In 1994, Maida, for the first time, introduced a novel technique to fabricate complete denture using rapid prototyping technology. Professor Maida is my instructor when I was in Osaka University for my PhD course. He inspired me most in my career. And at 2019, I'm so happy we had a dental symposium between Osaka University and NTU in Japan. In that symposium, we had a very deep discussion about the digital technique for complete, complete danger. And Professor Maida also gave me many new ideas about that. <clears throat> then in 1997, Kawahata presented method to duplicate complete danger by contact scanner and a CNC meaning technique. However, because the technology were not yet fully mature at that time, there were not many studies of article published on cut cam danger in the late 90s, even 2000. <clears throat> However, 2010 might be the turning point of the technique with the great development of CAT design software and CAM technology by using meaning of printing process as that. In 2017, a systemic review article has been reported about the clinical use of KKM denture after surveying lots of clinical trial. According to this review article, the clinical outcome for KKM denture is similar to those of conventional denture. Now, there is a great change in denture fabrication, not only includes treatment protocol, but also material selection. If we discuss the differences between conventional and the digital workflow for complete denture, conventional method is considered as a well-established treatment protocol, which includes appointment from preliminary impression, order molding, final impression to denture deliver. It usually takes four to five times for denture construction. On the other hand, we are always be told that denture can be fabricated faster and more accurately by using digital tool. But in the remote prosthodontic, there are many important treatment concepts behind this technology. And we should pay more attention on that furtherly. For example, the impression therapy. For dental reach, should we take microstatic or functional form for them? How to achieve our treatment goals 
by using a predictable te technique might be more important. So from my point of view, with the use of digital technique at this time, we can achieve similar results as those in conventional process, but to recall the form or identical reach, especially in low jaw, by using oral scan is still not easy to complete. And in the following presentation, I would like to share some clinical cases with Kekem Dentra and what I learned from those patients. Let's see the first clinical scenario. A lady came to my clinic because of difficult chewing. As you can see from the screen, they were only a thermolar and canine in the upper and lower jaw, respectively, and with severe bone loss around the teeth. Additionally, in the upper thermolar, there was a large dental decay at mesial side. She wore dentures from a long time ago, but these dental experience were not very good. She showed me the denture she used. As, as you can see from the screen, they have been repaired or renewed for several times. When she tried to talk about her condition, the denture was loosened, especially dislodgement from upper jaw. This made her very embarrassed. After clinical clinic examination, I thought the extent or the dental border might be too short and did not cover some important supporting area, such as tuberosity in the maxilla and the retromolar pad in the mandible. This influenced the peripheral seal at both jaws and resulted in poor retention. What could I do for her? So in the first day, the denture were picked up by impression material and some anatomy landmark were present on the impression material. I tried to extend the dental border on the stone models to increase the, the aerial contact between the mucosa and the dental base. Additionally, to improve the support and stability of low denture, the canine was preserved as a abutment tooth. After this adjustment, the support, stability, and retention of denture were all improved. She told me she could enjoy the food again. It was a time to remove the two next step for final processes. About the design of Bowman tooth, the model was surveyed physically first, and then improved the image to get design software. After that, I could confirm this path of insertion of the processes in parallel to the apartment tools from different viewpoint more easily. Besides, by superimposing of the image from the original cast, the necessary thickness of coping could also be controlled easily and designed in detail. In this case, the cornea was used to, as a coping material and cemented on the abutment tooth. In addition, the tissue conditioner material was applied on dental base. As you can see from the screen, the soft tissue of dental reach become health and stable right now. And the function form of the dental reach was also recorded by using tissue conditional material in this case. In the next step, the dentures which she used to were scanned from tissue, polish, and the crucial surface by lab scan to build out the virtual model with the jaw relation. Besides, according to the information from the current dentures, it helped me to determine the midline, adequate occlusal plans, and the tooth arrangement for the final processes. Here, 
I would like to draw your attention on the crucial design. It is a key factor for clinical success of denture, and a stable occlusion will influence the patient's satisfaction. But I have to say, a crucial adjustment is the most difficult part in KKM denture, comparing with those on the physical models. Here is a, a crucial scheme, which I took a long time to design. As you can see from the screen, all those software can simulate the lateral movement. It is still not easy for me to adjust the custody with crucial contact on working side and with context, even with contact on balance side. Then the prefabricated PMMA disc was milled for dental base and artificial teeth. This is always my favorite part during the whole process. Here are the dental beds and the artificial teeth after minion. In general, the results look all right, but when I evaluate them more clearly, a small gap was found between these two parts. As you can see from the screen, not only on maxillary, but also in mandibular arch. Why it happened? To improve the socket adaption between dental beds and teeth, I used silicon indicator material to check the unfitting area. The artificial teeth were connected to the dental beds with resin cement. The, in this case, the laboratory remount was used to evaluate the crucial context in MICP, lateral movement, and the protrusion. And the occlusion was adjusted on the physical articulator. Here, here is the result of final CAD-CAM denture. I also adapted some color stain and the surface gloss on the artificial teeth to improve the aesthetic. Here is a clinical outcome of final restoration. The patient was satisfied with the result and the way she smiled. I took the questionnaire about the use of KKM denture from her and let's see the result. Here are data three days after denture placement. She told me the new denture was comfortable and easy to wear. The scores or satisfaction were high, but it's very interesting. After one month, she told me that even though any discomfortable or pain, but denture seems to be deformed slightly when chewing, and this influences the quality and the effect of chewing. Five. Here is the outcome after three months using. The general scores of satisfaction was still high, and the retention or the processes was acceptable, as you can see from the screen. But she was still concerned about the flexibility of the denture and asked, is it easy to crack after long term use? Besides, if you observed the denture clearly, you might find some oil of operation on the surface, just only three months using. What does this clinic finding mean? Is the physical properties such as rigidity or surface hardness of the material I use for the KKM dentures is not strong enough? So I just check the ISO. Here's a minimal requirement for dental based material from the ISO standard. Please take a look at this table. And I try to find other product which is available in Taiwan after TFDA approved so far according to ISO standard. Finally, I find one. Here is a product description, but it's very interesting all the information about the material. 
are only present at more or less the value shown in ISO requirement. So I fabricate the denture again using this material in the same manner as I mentioned before. Here, the clinical outcomes, intraoral, intraoral, and the crucial context. Here, I would like to draw your attention on the fitness between dental beds and the teeth after the meaning process. In this case, I tried three different products of prefabricated PMA resin material to evaluate the adaption during processing. As you can see from the screen, no matter what product I use, gap between two parts is a common problem and need to be adjusted lately. Besides, connecting the teeth into dental circuit beds correctly is also challenging for me. Teeth are not easy to place into the circuit beds with correct position. Because of the viscosity of resin cement, and the short time, short working time of resin cement. In addition, remove the re residual cement from the, from the contact area is not easy neither. Many researchers also observe this phenomenon. And here is an interesting study discussed this topic. In this study, this digital superimposed analysis was used to evaluate the adaption in circuit bed. It gives me very useful information, but we have to keep in mind the digital superimposition, the digital superimposition revealed the trueness of the integral surface rather than actual circuit bed adaption because the impedance area of the virtual image could not occur. She comes to my clinic every six months after routine follow-up. After almost two years, everything looks fine. She was still set, she was still satisfied with the dentures. Let's see the let's take the look, close view of these Kekan dentures. Nowhere or operation was fine again on the surface now. However, the stain and the discoloration was found around the contact area between dental beds and teeth, as you can see from the screen. Here is the change of the score about the satisfaction from three days, one month, and 12 months. About the development of cake and denture and the problem I meet in clinical treatment, there are three topics. I'm very interested in. The first one is the physical property of this new material, such as prefabricated PMMA or pretin resin. The second is accuracy of the denture adaption, we may say the integral in the glial surface, and also the precision on the crucial surface, the chemical surface. Here are some interesting articles discussing this topic, and they give me very important information. However, this study were under, undergone only between milled and the conventional technique, both milled and print technique, some undertaken in the menstrual denture, others otherwise in medical dentures. Information is lacking about that with different technique including conventional compression of injection molding or digital taking meaning of 3D printing technique under the, under the uniform test condition. So in the next slide, I would like to introduce our studies about these topics. This is our first study and has been published on JPD 2020. The denture base adaption was evaluated both in maxillary and the mandibular denture with four different fabricated techniques. 
two different methods was used to evaluate the dental adaption. Silicon impression material was coated on the dental base and then placed on the reference model under loading. Then the thickness from 10 major points was collected for compression. Besides, in the digital superimposing analysis, the intaglial surface were compared with image from tissue surface of reference model using a surface matching software. They are a result. In general, the minimal thickness were present at bilateral tuberosity, and the maximal thickness was fine at post seal area. The thickness was lowest in meaning group, following by injection molding and compression molding. 3D printing group showed a great thickness. In the mandible, the 3D printing group recorded the lower silicon thickness, following by meaning group. About the digital superimposition analysis, green area indicated the ideal trueness. Yellow to red rep rep represent the imp impingement, and the blue area is the space between the dental base and the model. In the color map, the meaning group showed the most uniform trueness. Otherwise, the 3D printing group presented the least result. According to the result from this study, meaning group, injection group, and comparison group presented better uh, dental adaption, especially meaning group to both maxillary and mandible arches. On the other hand, 3D printing group recorded divergent result and lowest value for two minutes. Next, we focus on the dimensional change on a crucial surface fabricated by milled and print technique for maxillary and mandible dentures. Here is a full chart of the study. In the 3D printing group, we added two different factors, the build, the build angle and the post processing procedure, thoroughly to evaluate the effect on dimensional change. The same as our first study, two different methods were used to analyze the dimensional change on a crucial surface. In the digital superimposition analysis, the pre-processing and the post-processing scan file of each denture were compared by using surface matching software. Additionally, the widths were measured directly for each maxillary and mandible denture. Here is a result from, from the digital superimposition analysis. The color deviation pattern or meaning group, as you can see, A in the figure, was mainly green in both maxillary and mandibular dentures. In the 3D printing group, 90 degree view angle and placed on reference model for additional polymerization, as you can see B in the figure, showed more uneven, uh, more show more uniform color distribution. Next, <clears throat> this figure shows a deviation in waste of the maxillary and the mandibular dentures. The less amount of deviation presented the lower dimensional change. The meaning group, as shown in deep green box, <clears throat> presented the smallest amount compared with the, that of other groups. On the other hand, in the 3D printing group, larger value was recorded for the intermolar measurement, both in maxillary and the mandibular dentures. A 90 degree view angle placed on reference model for polymerization at the smallest value. According to these findings, meaning technique 
has the smallest dimensional, dimensional change for dangerous fabrication. On the other hand, 3D printing group produced divergent result during procedure. Among this group, denture print with 90 degree view angle and place a reference model for light polymerization presented better dimensional, di present better dimensional accuracy, especially for the mandibular denture. We, have, we still have some study ongoing in our team and I wish we can share results with you in the near future. Okay, let's evaluate some currently available CAD-CAN denture system. This is an article summarize the differences among four systems at 2017. The necessary appointments for denture construction are different from two to four times. Otherwise, glossy arch tracing is widely used in those systems to record the jaw relation. However, as the rapid change of digital technology and innovation at 2022, some of them have integrated with new system. In the next slide, I would like to introduce a clinical case using that. The gentleman came to our clinic because of difficult chewing. He had dentures, but as you can see, these dentures were repaired and renied for several times. After examination, the denture was not stable in the mouth, so he would like to have a new one. The treatment started with impression by using arginate with two different viscosities. Then a spatial design device was used to take the jaw relation, as you can see, from the screen. After that, a baseball named UTS cat was applied to determine the occlusal plane in parallel to the pupil line and the campus line. Next, impression from maxilla and the mandible and the jaw relation record was all scanned by a left scanner. After that, the virtual model were built up with preliminary jaw relation. On these virtual models, the bike plates were designed and print out. In the second appointment, border molding and the functional impression was undertaken using this bike plates in the condition of closed mouth. The patient was asked to move his lip or swallow to recall the form of soft tissue under functional movement. After that, the horizontal jaw relation was recorded again with glossy arch tracing technique. Besides it, use the Facebook again to decide the crucial plan in detail. Then the final impression from methylary and the mandibular arch were scanned in the same manner. The data of jaw relation were also imported into the CAT design software. This is the result of tooth arrangement. After adjustment of the crucial context in MICB and the lateral movement virtually, the trying denture was then printed out. Let's see the outcome of trying denture. He was satisfied with his smile and the way she looks now. Besides, the support, stability, and retention of dentures were acceptable. About the dental fabrication, we used two stage meaning processes to fabricate the cam denture. In the, in the first meaning, the denture base was milled roughly. Then the artificial teeth were cemented into the denture socket base by using position index. After that, 
the denture was milled again in detail. This process not only improved the aesthetic of the dentures, but also increased the accuracy of the, of the construction. About the cushion, in order to achieve a stable cushion content in MICP and lateral movement, the finished denture was mounted on the articulator by using new in, inter occlusal record in his mouth. And this is the result after clinical remount. Here are the outcome of final KKM denture and his smile. Let's see his functional movement. The denture was stable in the mouth. As you can see from the screen, the peri peripheral seal of methylary and the mandibular denture was all acceptable. Now, he used this denture for one and a half year and come to our clinic for routine follow-up. Let's see the last clinical scenario, and it is a very challenging one for me. The lady was referred from oral surgeon department for prosthetic rehabilitation. This senior lady lost all of his teeth in the lower jaw and had difficulty in eating. She had tongue cancer several years ago, and the glossolectomy was done at the right side. After surgery, tongue movement was very limited. Vestibule and the vestibule death could not be found here. Most of all, the denture ridge where can be used to support the denture was very limited. From my experience, it is more difficult situation for removable denture processes. How could I do for her? After discussion with my colleague from oral surgeon department and patient, the removable complete RDP with the AD of implant placement might be indicated for her. To record the form of the edential ridge was not very easy for her. I thought she must be very suffering during this procedure because soft tissue become became very stiff after surgery. Here is a preliminary impression and the story cast. Considering her spatial condition, neutral wrong concept might be an alternative method to recall the space for denture in her mouth. So I prepared a biplate for that. Next, the tissue conditioner material was added on the biplate for several times to record the potential danger space between the buckle chip and the tongue. As you can see from the screen, then the bite plate was scanned with the superimposition of this image. It is easy to confirm the potential space for the processes. So I designed and arranged teeth within this potential space for a restoration in the future by CAP design software. Then the file was imported and printed as a radiography stamp for CT examination formally. And here's a clean outcome of the radiography stamp in her mouth. The treatment is still ongoing now. I wish I can share, I can share with you the result of this clean case in the near future. Lastly, I would like to introduce the complete danger education in National Taiwan University. Our students have this course in the fourth grade. They spend more than eight hours every week to learn how to fabricate the denture from the beginning. This is a very traditional course in our school. In this course, they have to arrange the teeth for three times. Once, for zero degree non-anatomy form teeth, twice for 33 degrees anatomy form teeth. From three years ago, I tried to integrate the digital workflow into this course. 
So they have to, they have to learn how to recognize the anatomy landmark from the virtual model, decide the crucial plan and how to and design the dental border, and then learn how to arrange the teeth, achieve a crucial contact at MICP and the lateral movement using digital tool as they did on the physical artic articulator in the course before. <clears throat> and it always the most challenging part for them. Finally, the first tuning and the finish. Here are some results from our students this year. <coughs> I'm sorry. One of them did a good job within four hours. The crucial skin looks all right in NICB and the lateral movement. However, most of them told me they could not finish the job within the limited time or could not arrange the teeth well. After class, I asked them to write a questionnaire to know why they, what, what they learned for dental course, for the dental course by conventional or digital workflow. Here are results from 39 students who attended the city course this year. Let's see the general understand about the protocol for dental verification. There was no obvious difference between these two different methods. But as you can see from the figure, in the items of tooth arrangement, determination of crucial plan of anatomy landmark, digital workflow presented better result. Also, let's, let's see some comment about the lecture. These comments are very interesting and some are not very easy to translate in English. Here are general comment. Some say, someone say, conventional workflow is easy for the beginner. On the other hand, digital workflow is suitable for people who have more experience. Students who prefer conventional workflow, they told me, is more effective and can adjust their model in small detail. One student's feedback told me about that. She felt dizzy when she tried to move the virtual model. Otherwise, in the group who likes the digital workflow, clear, fast, repeatable are the three common keywords. One of, one of them said it's fantastic because AI can help in the whole progress. But be honest, I'm confused about his comment. Are we too dependent on digital technology? Here, I would like to conclude my presentation about digital workflow for comprehension. Firstly, yes, the improvement of digital technique increase the efficiency of treatment protocol, but we have to keep in mind something behind the technology. We have to find the balance between new technology and the treatment concept. Second, digital workflow for dental construction is not inferior when compared those in conventional protocol. But from my point of view, it is still not easy to recall the form of identity reach by using the oral scan technique as a present. Finally, we need more time to follow up the clinical outcome for the patient who wear Captain Denture. What kind of complication we will face in the long-term follow-up stage and how to overcome this problem. This is all my presentation. I wish some point I introduced might be helpful for treatment of patient with catching danger. Thank you for your attention. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for your time and for the very inspiring um, lecture that you presented and you dived us 
deep to the uh, digital workflow for the complete removable um, uh, denture prosthesis. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and you started with the uh, conventional ways to uh, provide the prosthesis for the edentulous patients. And then you move it to the uh, digital workflow and you went deeper to the uh, uh, details for the uh, digital workflow. And you provided and showed us uh, very interesting cases um, and some of them uh, were very challenging to treat, but eventually it could be managed by using digital uh, technologies. Um, again, the, the digital workflow, it has a lot of challenges as you uh, uh, mentioned and as you showed to us. And uh, you compared the, uh, uh, the challenge that related to material itself um, about the, uh, the clinical procedures. But what I, I noted that uh, most of the cases you started with the conventional uh, uh, techniques and then you start the digital work, workflow. So um, my question here is, um, do you think that we are still need uh, some time to shift totally to the digital workflow? in the complete uh, 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 removable uh, denture prosthesis. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much. I always thinking about this, this question because just as I mentioned in my presentation, we should not just look at the technology only. We have to uh, think about something behind the technology. For example, just as I mentioned, the, the establish the treatment protocol. And uh, I think the most uh, digital workflow can do everything just compared to the conventional uh, workflow technique. But one, they still need time to overcome the problem. That is the impression, in the impression. Uh, because I was uh, educated in the late 19, and at that time, we don't have too much uh, digital uh, tool we have to, we learn a lot of uh, conventional uh, uh, prosthetic concept. Uh, from my education, the, the, this is very important to take a good uh, record of the soft tissue. No matter you, you prefer the microsthetic, or no matter you prefer a functional impression or select pressure impression, uh, no matter what kind of concept you rely on, but you have to design the trade or use the impression material uh, according to that. But uh, just as from my personal opinion, uh, it is still very difficult uh, to use the oral scan to take record of the soft tissue because I cannot confirm this, uh, this image is under low of the microstatic because we have to use the mirror to push your buckle chip to take the, the record. So, so I think I think in the future, maybe this problem will be overcome. But just as I mentioned in the last, the, my conclusion, at the present, the technology at present is still very difficult uh, to, take, uh, to take the full digital. Uh, I prefer is integrate uh, digital workflow to the conventional. I, I prefer the hybrid, how to say that? Hybrid workflow is my favorite. I, uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's still a long way to go. Yeah, the full digital is still a long way to go for me. Am I getting my message close clearly? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great and I totally agree with that. Uh, we, still, we, we still need the hybrid um, uh, integration for the uh, complete denture because as you mentioned, um, the, the impression technique itself is dependent on are you going to the functional impression or uh, mucostatic impression. Um, so it has to be a hybrid as you, uh, as you mentioned. And um, also, uh, I would like from the attendees, if they have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to write your questions and uh, Dr. Yang will, will answer your, uh, your question. Um, 
you mentioned on the last uh, part of the, uh, the presentation about the education, and that's very important because now we are teaching a new generation that engaging in the digital dentistry era and teaching them with uh, those kind of technologies is very important because sooner or later we are going to shift to the uh, uh, fully digital workflow. And the answers, the questionnaire that we provided to the students is very interesting. And it showed to me that they have open mind for that. And yes, it's true that it's difficult and it looks from, from the beginning is easy, but when you engage in the procedures, it, it seems to be difficult and it needs some time. So how did you feel from the uh, students directly when they are starting dealing with those uh, kind of technology specifically for uh, uh, for the uh, 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 teeth arrangements because i guess sometimes it's very difficult for the students to understand how to um, arrange the teeth on the right position uh, with the right uh, closure scheme and stuff like that can you touch on that please okay Thank you. Thanks for your question. This is all. This is always. Uh, I ask myself. Myself. Okay. Uh, I start to teach, integrate the digital workflow in the in the complicated uh, complicated course from three uh, three years ago, and uh, every time when they finish the course, I ask them, "How do you feel about the digital workflow to to design the danger?" They all told me, oh, it's interesting. Someone said it's fun. But sometimes I just wonder, is it the correct word to describe an academic topic as interesting or fun? We can say play soccer is fun, play football is fun, but play uh, to design a computer is fun. I'm not so sure it's correct or not. For them, it's just like a TV game, I think. They, they find it very funny. The model will, will move in, in everywhere. But I, it, I, I think it's still very hard for them to understand the general, uh, the general uh, consideration about the, the complete danger right now, because they are only four grade students. They did, in Taiwan, uh, our students will touch the patient from the sixth grade. So they, are, they don't touch any patient. So they, I think they don't know what the, what the real meaning that is. So I just, let, I just want to let them know what is a conventional workflow and what is digital workflow for the complete danger. And uh, I think when they start to touch patient, start to treat the patient, maybe what I told, what we told will make, remind him to think more and more. That's what I wish. What I wish. So I tried for from three years ago. I tried to teach them uh, with the digital uh, technology. That's what I want to say. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, uh, just if we go back a little bit to the uh, research part, and we know that the industry is um, driving the uh, the digital workflow for the um, uh, uh, digital dentures, and you intensively uh, uh, search it and apply research uh, regarding the, 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 the different materials and techniques uh, to see the, um, uh, the volubility of the materials and techniques applied to digital workflow for uh, complete uh, um, dentures. So, and you showed that some kind of systems are uh, still superior to provide um, high quality materials and it can be promising uh, for the future. And also you compared in details uh, between the milling and the 3D printing uh, techniques. And it's really known that the, the milling techniques is uh, still expensive and sometimes uh, cost a lot to, 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 to provide the denture. And on the other hand, 3D printing is more cheaper to provide um, dentures, um, but the quality is still issue. How do you see 
the, the future of 3D printing for the complete tensile uh, materials. Okay. As I mentioned, I'm very interested uh, about three topics. One is the physical property. <clears throat> the other is accuracy. According to my story, the meaning, uh, the meaning technique has the best uh, accuracy than 3D printing. Uh, in other way, there are too many factors will have in influenced the current accuracy of 3D printing. There are too many factors. For example, the thickness of layer, build angle, and the, the, the way of the post-processing. There's too many, uh, too many factors will influence the result. So uh, if you ask me, I will say uh, at the present time, the 3D printing can be an interim of provisional processes. But if you want to use it as a definitive final restoration, you still have a long way to go. I said in the removable data processes, you still have a long way to go. And uh, just as I mentioned, I have, we still have some uh, study, now it's ongoing, not published. We do some physical test about the, the material use the uh, 3D printing. Uh, the 3D printing is very, how to say that, the flexibility versus the blood is not very strong. Sometimes we have to increase the thickness in the venture phase. And uh, one of my graduate students, he did a study to put the reinforced, metal reinforced, framework into the denture base. If you put the metal framework into the denture base, the, the rigidity, the hardness will, will be compared with the conventional ones. But if you had to do that, why don't you do the conven conventional uh, denture? So this is a problem. So I have to say, uh, digital workflow for complete denture, I think meaning technique is a uh, it still can be used, but it's very expensive. 3D printing, although it's, it's, it's not so expensive, but the quality or not, it's not good enough. We have to wait and see. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think um, you're right, Milink, uh, based on the evidence that you showed to us, it's, um, it has a high quality and high accuracy um, to produce uh, complete dentures. Uh, why I ask it about the uh, printing and milling, because for example, in maxillofacial prosthetics, and uh, if you think to um, uh, provide digital uh, produced obturator, for example, it's very difficult to produce it by milling because you will have to face Sorry. the issue the size yes. and the issue yes. of the undercut and the access for the uh, drilling uh, to the um, undercut area, stuff like that. So um, that's why I'm asking about the uh, 3D printing because with the 3D printing, it's more easier for obturator to be uh, produced by that uh, uh, that technique. Um, sorry, I, 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 I asked a lot of questions uh, because I felt that the attendee is a little is a little bit uh, high to ask. So um, I tried to, to, to ask you and take this great chance with you as expertise in this area and ask more questions to, um, to show everything clear uh, for the people who are interested in the digital workflow. So um, I would like to thank you again. So there is no more questions from my side. Um, so I really thank you for your time and uh, for the engagement for uh, providing us uh, with this very valuable uh, information about the digital workflow for complete removable dental prosthesis. So I think we are going to conclude um, our uh, webinar, um, but uh, before to do that, I would like, it's our tradition to uh, present you a certificate of appreciation. Um, we hereby express our sincere uh, appreciation to Dr. Song Chi Young in recognition of his contribution as a live webinar uh, speaker for the Digital Pontex webinar series on the topic of digital workflow for complete removable dental prosthesis, clinical procedure, research, and education that was presented on Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. So um, Dr. Young, Thank you so much for everything.
Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So uh, once again, I would like to thank all the attendees for their um, uh, contribute to attend this webinar. Uh, I will take this chance to announce the, uh, the other uh, upcoming webinars. So please uh, uh, attend those webinars. It will improve your skills in the digital industry. So thank you all and have a nice uh, day and a nice evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.